you would uh, direct the meeting, that you would um, bring us all closer to you as well. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone wishing to speak tonight, the forms are next to uh, Chief Ragsdale. Please fill one out and give it to Janice England, our secretary. <clears throat> Consent agenda, action regarding minutes for July 16th, July 30th. Action regarding ordinance 2024-16, annual service plan. Action regarding building improvement grant uh, with 124 West McElroy. Action regarding appointment of Carl Johnson as reserve police officer. Action regarding the Belt Mill Improvement District. And action uh, regarding disposal of city surplus items. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Motion by Brack. Second by Cindy. Motions passed. Uh, note we have a quorum. Um, Mayor Flippo is absent tonight. Uh, employer recognition, Gabe Ram. Mayor Pro Tem and Council, uh, pleased to announce we have a few um, special recognitions tonight. The first will be from the Saginaw Recreation Center. Good, I almost said good morning. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. I'm lost. I'm confused on what time it is. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you all for letting us have this opportunity to recognize staff. Um, we had a we have an incredible staff and I hope you are proud of us and what we do. Um, I, I've tried to keep you updated weekly on how we're doing as a department, how we're doing as facilities such as the aquatic center um, and, um, and the recreation center. But um, we also have an incredible program that we started. I, I've been here 20 years and we revamped it about probably 19 years ago, but it's been in this city. The, the summer camp has been here for probably in the 30 years, something like that. And um, COVID was a devastating thing for us because it didn't allow us to, to, to operate. And uh, we've, we've, since then, we've been able to, to do that. Uh, we've, been, we've worked really hard, our staff, uh, Vicki Weldon, Recreation Services Manager, and Jason England, Recreation Services Supervisor, um, managed this, uh, our summer camp. Uh, we have such an incredible staff uh, that uh, we had our largest summer camp that we've had in five or six years, which is a testament to them and all of their hard work. And uh, we want to recognize our, our summer camp staff tonight. Turn it over to Ms. Vicki. Yes, this um, dedicated staff um, that we have running the camp uh, comes to work at 7 a.m. when the camp opens and is there until 6 p.m. This year we had 97 registered for camp. Last year it was 73. We also had 25 registered just for drop-in. So quite, an, quite a crowd. And on top of that, we're running Senior Center at the Recreation Center. So with bingo Wednesday and summer camp, it's quite a crowd. But uh, this dedicated staff of young people have um, did a great job of entertaining, keeping the kids safe, and providing just a good summer memories for, for the kids enrolled in Camp Kids Are Awesome. So not only is it Camp Kids Are Awesome, but it's Counselors Are Awesome. So I'd like to call up, if they're here, Cheney is our camp director. Yay, Cheney. <laughs> we have Will, our assistant camp director. Megan was our lead counselor. I'll get to one of them. <laughs> camp counselors now. The 10 camp counselors were Jovi, Josias, Jovi. 
<laughs> Josias. Caroline. It's just you, girl. <laughs> Rebecca. Cadence, Israel, Jakiah, Gabe, Kaya, Isaac, And Jason. Oh. <laughs> um, and Jason England and myself. Let's give these four great counselors. Mayor Pro Tem Council, the next set of recognitions we have are our uh, student apprentice program participants. Um, we have students every summer join us for a brief amount of time. I uh, remind you, we're very proud of it, but we did win a statewide award for this program. So I think Pedro's gonna. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council, good evening. Uh, Gabe took my first two points in my introduction, so now I'm very lost. Uh, so just to figure out like what Gabe said, these are high school and college students who come out in the summer uh, and they work. Uh, we have a few of them here today, and uh, with that, uh, well actually, let's go over the program, I apologize. Like I said, he took my intro, so I'm pretty much everywhere. These students come for the summer, and we actually show them not only what they do for the job, but what the city does as a whole. This year we did a little bit differently. They came and toured. And actually, it's kind of weird and awkward because for the first time ever, we do one of these tours. Uh, we have fire and police on the same day, and the fire department always wins, but for the first time this year, the police department got it. The students loved, enjoyed the, the police department better, but I think it's because Lieutenant Crippen was given the tour, and he gives like great tours, so I think that was the reason. So I believe the police department should have Lieutenant Crippen giving those tours all the time. Uh, so with that, they moved on to City Hall the next following week where they toured our facilities here in this building. They got to meet finance, they got to meet HR. From then, they moved on to the library and uh, to the rec center. They also went to the aquatic center as well. Is that right, you guys? I actually had to step out for that. Yes, aquatic center. They got to enjoy that. The following week, they went over to Public Works. They got to check out how water meters work and all that other stuff. And after that, they went to the animal services where actually the SAP students who work at the animal services gave the tour uh, with assistance with Jose. So they went pretty much everywhere. Next year, we want to continue that and get all the departments under it. There were some that we did miss, uh, but they got to enjoy that. And with that, I'm actually going to call up Jose uh, so he can introduce his two or his three uh, SAP students. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council. Um, this year's SAP students that we had were actually the best students we've had yet. Um, last year, we only had one student apply. Uh, this year, we asked if we could open it up to the FFA programs through Eagle Mountain ISD, and we actually got 16 applicants through it. So three of the applicants that we selected, when I call your name, just come up here to the front. First one's going to be Gloriella Hagler. We know her as Gigi. <laughs> Just go ahead and stand up there. Next one's going to be Diamond Blake. The third one is Haley Finn. She's not able to make it tonight due to band. Um, so our appreciation for the students that came up this year and worked for us, Animal Services actually hosted a cookout for them. So they got to eat some really good barbecue and some food from the, that the staff donated stuff for, the, for their hard work this year. 
Um, while they were working with us, not only did they help out with shelter tech duties, they learned how uh, important it is for us to clean the shelter, keep the animals in good living conditions. They got to learn medical, uh, whether it be dosing medications, taking weight on animals, vaccinations, how to do blood draws for heartworms. Um, and they actually got to sit in. If they wanted to, they got to sit on us or sit in on us doing a euthanasia. Um, they just got to come in, comfort the animal, and see how we actually do it. Um, so that way there's not any horror stories about how euthanasias go with the animal shelter. Um, to the point, one of the teachers actually asked, how are you doing this without being even certified to do this? Um, they didn't participate as far as doing the injections for euthanasia, but they did get to sit in and, and, and uh, see how we do it. Um, so they also got to go out on patrol with the animal control officers once all the cleaning duties were done. Um, they got to go out with us a couple of times to see how we patrol the city and what violations we look for. And they actually got to do some admin work up the front desk, doing adoptions, uh, return to owners, uh, registrations, and stuff like that. So thank you all for applying. I hope you all come back and apply next year if you choose to. And that's all I have. Well, I thought I was going to do a whole group one, but yeah. Sorry, I'll have to stand up there for a bit. So right now, we'll get all of you guys up there. Uh, so our next one is uh, actually my department, communication. So we have two students this year. Uh, one of them is a returning one. That's his third and final year. He's not coming back again. But he's the one that did all the graphics that you see. Uh, we left some training grain flyers or big posters for you guys, so that's them. Uh, if you notice, our video production went up a little bit this year during the summer, so that was Kevin, the other one. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here this, this evening. Uh, they are college students, so they're, I think apparently they're too cool for school, I guess. I don't know. Uh, our next one is our library department, so I'm going to have Ellen come up and talk about her two students. Hey. Yeah, we had two students this year. They were Amazing, we loved them. Um, we had Ainsley Culp, who can come up, <laughs> and Kamaya Jackson, who's not here tonight. And uh, <laughs> we didn't do a cookout for them. That we should have done that, but we did have a lot of a lot of cake and ice cream and popsicles at the library, so that was that was good. Um, our two students mostly worked at our front desk, helping our customers, um, just facilitating all the crowds that come in in the summertime and um, also doing a lot of shelving. <laughs> um, but they both had a great time, I think, and we certainly enjoyed having them. I think they're gonna run and take a picture now. They're just messing with us. <laughs> I just want to add thank you so much for City Council for supporting this program. Like Gabe said, it is a TML award-winning program. Uh, and every year, somehow, when we get closer to, to it, we always get another city in the, in the state asking, hey, how are you guys doing it? Uh, can you let us know what your blueprint is? And uh, one more person I want to thank is David. He is uh, our intern as well, and he helped run the program. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, Council, one last uh, spe special re recognition. This doesn't happen too often. So 40 years ago, um, Janice England began working for the city. So uh, we want to recognize her 40 years with the city. Um, let's stand and clap. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Lee, Lee asked her if uh, she was interested in another 40, and she did not say no, so I'm very hopeful. Okay, we'll take the into a public hearing. Kim Quinn, budget presentation.
Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. This, um, you've pretty much heard all of the funds now. This, is, this presentation is just gonna be an overview. I've got a couple of graphs and then we'll go over the highlights, department, uh, I mean, fund by fund. Thank you, Keith. So this is just a graph of the overall, all of the, the total budget. As I told you in the very, very first workshop, um, we say the budget, but it's actually 13 different budgets. And so this is uh, just a representation of the revenue sources of the total budget, which is about $63 million, all 13 funds. So, um, and these are just the general uh, categories of uh, revenue sources, property taxes um, and sales tax are the highest. Property taxes we've talked about before go to pay majority of um, or part of the general fund, debt service fund, and a portion of it goes into the TERS fund. Sales tax, general fund, CCPD, street maintenance. Um, and this is just a graphical rep uh, representation of that. Bond proceeds, I called it bond proceeds, actually part of it. Um, three million of it for um, uh, enterprise fund would actually be certificates of obligation and not bond proceeds. Um, the next one is just uh, expenditures by category. Again, this is all funds, not just the general fund. Um, and uh, just a graphical representation of that by category. This one is showing you by, um, not, different, not by department, but again, all funds by uh, the types of expenditures. So you can see overall the total budget is about 33% personal services at salary and benefits, about 25% operating, capital outlay 23%, and that's not just capital equipment, but that includes the capital projects as well. 11% of that is debt service. That's the principal and interest that we pay on our bonds. And then we have a little over five million in interfund transfers between the different uh, funds. Now we'll go to general fund. Um, general fund <clears throat> is um, roughly a third, of, a third of the revenue sources are property taxes a little less than a third sales tax, and then the other third, a little bit more than a third actually, are other sources. So fees that we charge, interest earnings, transfers in, and then this year we've got about 1.8 million of use of fund balance. This is expenditures by department for the general fund only. You can see um, about not quite half is public safety. Biggest departments are, are police and fire, followed by, looks like, admin and public works. Just another way of looking at the budget. This is, um, again, a different way of looking at the budget. As you can see, if you're looking at just general fund, over 70% of that are salary and benefits operating 22%, transfers 1%, capital outlay 6%. And Mr. Lawson, you asked a question last uh, council meeting that I wasn't able to answer, but if you wanted to know total overtime compared to salaries, it's 4.5%. Okay. What, Kim? Yes, ma'am? What does the um, percentage of salary and benefits this year compare to last year? Um, if you don't know that answer today, we can save it for Saturday. I want to say it's a, it was, it's, I want to say for some reason 73% was last year, but let me check on that. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're down a little bit just because our capital outlay is more this year. Okay. Overall, but we can compare last year to this year for sure. Okay. Okay. So that's just um, a quick overview, just a different way to look at it graphically. These are just, I would call it the headlines by fund. Um, general fund, the, the big thing there was, you know, the assignment that y'all gave to staff was fund uh, the new pay plan option two. 
Um, and it, it's, it's a very tight budget, but we were able to accomplish that. The proposed budget includes that. It includes part-time salary increase of 3%. We have various line item increases that we've gone over before in um, the last few meetings to maintain current service levels. And all of the special requests that were um, one-time requests were all funded with um, fund balance. The debt service fund um, is going to meet all of our requirements. It's about a little over $7 million to pay uh, principal and interest on our debt. The enterprise fund, the highlights are uh, water rate decrease, wastewater increase. Again, the um, impact to the average customer will be about $1.67 per month increase. Again, it pays for the um, enterprise fund employees, the pay plan option two. We have funding in there for the uh, water line replacement in Opal to do in conjunction with the street improvements. There are park center water, imp water system improvements that was talked about during the CIP update that Trenton did a few meetings back. It also includes um, the actual construction of the uh, Fairmont Sanitary Sewer, they're finishing up the engineering this year, and um, funding for the 12-inch water line along West McElroy. Part of that is funded with impact fees. The Capital Projects Fund, again, this was covered uh, when Trenton went over the CIP update. The biggest new projects here are the different portions of McElroy that we talked about. Um, engineering and then some improvements that we're going to do through the county and then the other big project is North Old Decatur Road. We'll also have carrying forward the current year projects of Knowles, the Library Senior Center project, interse intersection improvements at Blue Mound and Industrial and then the park project, park bond project improvements will be carried forward from the current year. In the drainage utility fund, the highlights there are we're gonna begin engineering on the um, Saginaw Boulevard drainage system three. And then there were some equipment, some more of the smart manhole covers and a remote control mower in the drainage utility fund. In the can street. I, can I ask what the, the yes, sir? Uh, smart remote controlled mower, is it smart enough to where, I guess that's yours, right? Yeah. Is it smart enough to where you can use GPS to map out an area and it will go and mow it itself? It, is, it does, yes. Oh, that's good, good. Appreciate, appreciate it. In the street maintenance fund, again, we talked about the um, temporary improvements, the mill and overlay at the different sections for um, East McElroy and then the Opal Street reconstruction. In CCPD, um, we're replacing, this is the year that we'll replace three patrol vehicles and it continues funding for the flock system. I think this is the fourth year of the Axon contract for the police department equipment. Um, and then it also includes a, the special request for covered parking for the police department vehicles. Uh, and I, wanted, then, I wanted to say something about the flock system is we, Definitely, I was a little nervous about it, but it, since it's been in, there's, there's already, we've seen a huge positive in, uh, uptick in, in it uh, helping the citizens, you know, people who's done not good things. And that, able to that's catch correct. Yeah, we've resolved uh, or solved a couple of ag assault uh, yeah. offenses that have occurred with the use of flock. Been a number of arrests for flock hits and stolen vehicle recoveries for flock yeah. hits, but. Really, the, the biggest advantage we see is in investigations where we have these crimes that occur, yeah. and we're able to track down plates and get a suspect based off that. Yeah, yeah. I, just wonder, I want to point out that I think this is a good investment, good ROI on this. I agree. And after the initial investment, it's um, 67500 ongoing. So for 20 cameras, that's pretty reasonable. Um, and then in the ex Police Expendable Trust Fund, that's where we uh, pay for the supplies for the canine program. So that's the big, I guess, ticket item, big, big item there. Not, it's not a big ticket, but that's um, where we fund that program. Donations, nothing new in, new in this uh, department. This is where 
Um, the donations, mostly from water bills from the, our customers, um, pay for special programs for the library, special events, holiday de decorations, and public art program are just a few of them. In the general escrow fund, we use some of the collections there for hotel motel that we collect through hotel motel for special events, and it also includes the farmer market administration. The Belt Mill Public Improvement District, um, you uh, approved the annual service plan tonight as part of the consent agenda. Um, we collect the assessments through, um, through the PID, um, and then it's used for administrative expense, and the only, ex only other expense that we have in there is the developer reimbursement. So this will be the 24-25 will be the third year of that expenditure for the development or uh, reimbursement. This will be the third year that we start, we were collecting um, revenue in the TERS fund. The incremental value is um, going to be about 21 million this year, so it's um, growing quickly. Um, and the only expense that we have budgeted there is just the administrative expense for P3. So I was um, just a quick overview of the funds. This again is just a quick overview. I'm not gonna touch on it too much because it's just repeating of what I've already told y'all. We talked about um, we're over three billion in assessed value. 30 million of that was new value, 24 residential, six million commercial, <clears throat> industrial. Our average single value or home Home increased about 3.9 percent from 248,000 to 258,000. This is a comparison of the proposed rate <clears throat> to the current rate. We talked about it is a tax rate reduction. However, the property taxes will increase if you have an average value home um, by about $36.35 per year. And that's really all I've got prepared um, for y'all. It sounds like we have a consensus that we will have the Saturday meeting, um, so we'll plan on that. Tonight, we'll, um, this is a public hearing, so we'll, we'll hear from the public if there's any comments. Um, we'll table the public hearing, I guess is the appropriate way to do that. We'll continue it next meeting. Next meeting, we will also have a public hearing on the tax rate, and then we will ask you to vote on the budget and the tax rate as well. So that's the plan going forward. Um, we have questions uh, from Council Member Lawson that we will plan to discuss at the Saturday meeting. Um, but other than that, we're, there's no real agenda. It's just um, whatever y'all want us to discuss or have a discussion if there's something that you want us to prepare for that. Uh, we'll need to know, so we'll have the answers for y'all. I think what we want to do, you all correct me wrong, is just start at page one and, you know, and just literally go through this binder section by section. So say, I'll, I'll pick on Ragsdale, the police chief, he, he would get up and I'm assuming he'd represent the police department and he would go over that section. Is that kind of what we were thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Council, any questions, comments? Anyone? We are in a public session, so if anyone would like to speak, you don't have to fill out a form. No one wishing to speak will take us out of the public hearing. I would oh. like to say one thing before I end that, just to let all citizens know that uh, they're welcome and, in fact, encouraged to come to that Saturday meeting if uh, you want to go through the gauntlet of this page or this booklet page by page. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is a it is a public hearing so you or meeting, so you're you're encouraged to come. Okay, we'll take it out of a public hearing. So I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we we need to actually leave the public hearing open and we would table it into the eight, uh, August thirteenth meeting. Okay. So you would entertain a motion to table. Okay. Be my recommendation. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem, I'll make a motion that we table it till the 13th meeting. Motion made. 
Carol Reed. Second by Nick. Motion to table has been approved. Nick, New. excuse me. Um, what time is that meeting uh, on Saturday? 8.30. 8.30. A.M. We know that, but the citizens may not <laughs> know that. 2.30 p.m.? 8.30 a.m. <laughs> oh, 8.30 a.m. Okay. You'll miss it if you get here at 2.30. Not if I'm here at a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new business. Uh, consideration and action regarding Saturday work hours for Bryn Construction for the new library, Lee Howell. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Burn Construction has officially requested to alter the work hours for Saturdays um, from 9 a.m. to an 8 a.m. start time. Uh, we have had absolutely zero complaints on the construction site from the very beginning uh, in regards to any noise or light issues or anything going on there uh, from the neighbors, none whatsoever. Um, We've had some early pours, actually, which, you know, they were very conscious about the noise and positioning vehicles away from the homes. I'm sure they would continue to exercise that at 8 a.m. Uh, as they have in the earlier hours, but they're just asking you to do that, of course, to try to make the best uh, available hours, and especially for the rest of the summer as we're hitting and a going above 100 degrees in most of the days of August predicted and uh, probably some into September as well. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have on that. Council, any questions? How, how long are they anticipating needing the Saturday work hours? Yeah, we, they've asked to just leave it open indefinitely. Um, I think, you know, as the morning hours start to get darker, we we will adjust we will adjust that if we need to. Okay. I have a question. Uh, when school starts, what sort of interference are we looking at with schools? It, the they're planning on tr move, uh, planning around the school traffic as possible, but on Saturdays. Nope, oh, that's true. Saturday. <laughs> yeah, there there's not much activity over here. Okay. Have we had any, had to do any work stoppages or any any code enforcement or anything like that on, on this company while they're working on this project? None at all. Okay. Good. I can say when I go by in the mornings, they're very professional. Very, way more than I've seen the other ones. They are. Okay. No more questions? I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'll make a motion. Or Mayor Pro Tem, motion <laughs> to approve it as written. Motion approved, made by Brack, approved, seconded by Valerie. <clears throat> Motion is approved. Discussion of salary study, City Manager Gabe Ram. Mayor Pro Tem and Council, uh, like Kim mentioned earlier, I have no information to present to you this evening. Uh, have included all the relevant documents in the backup uh, as part of your packet. Out of an abundance of caution, since we really haven't heard much feedback uh, from the Council, I would just like to go down maybe by department and see if there's any uh, questions. We do have uh, Jada from Baker Tilly available to answer any questions. So. You know, this could be um, two minutes or it could be however long you need to address your concerns. So, um, is this stage right? We'll start with the fire department. Is that fair? Any, any concerns regarding comments on uh, salaries in the fire department or building inspection code enforcement? No, supportive of the data that Baker Tilly has, has provided back to us. Okay. Public Works. Same with the chief. I don't have any. They provided everything we need. Okay. HR. No, don't really have any. We had one question, but it, it was handled. So. Uh, police department. 
nothing to add or subtract from what was presented. Finance, same. Lee. Nothing else from my area. Okay. Uh, admin, city secretary was um, as part of administration. The I guess the only other thing, shorter questions. The difficult situation we're trying to correct, which is what the consultant recommended, is to correct compression, where tenured employees uh, get squeezed um, in the spread of the salary range compared to newer employees. So if Jada's available, maybe she would have a more eloquent description of that, and then I would just open the floor to any questions y'all might have. Can you hear me? Great. And just, I want to, I'm having a hard time hearing, so I want to repeat, the question is asking about, I guess, what the intention of option two is in terms of how it would impact tenured employees. Yeah, and describe uh, compression, if you could. Absolutely. So compression can happen in two ways. Um, first, through positions, making sure you've got adequate separation between positions, especially supervisor-subordinate separation. Um, but then through the implementation, we're looking at compression of the employees. So if you've got two employees in the same title, for an example, and one was hired you know, just this past week, versus one has been in that same title for five years. Um, the implementation, if you were to select option one, for an example, might put both of those employees in the same exact position in that new pay range. Option two is intending to move the employee who's been in that role a lot longer further into the range, which if that range had been in place the whole time, should mimic where they would have been because they're receiving increases over that five years of being in that role. So option two is meant to kind of simulate where should employees who've been in their roles for a number of years be within their new pay range versus, you know, you hire new employees. The price of hiring new employees means they're leapfrogging over existing employees. And so option two is trying to help alleviate some of that compression in that way. Are there any questions? Council? Not about compression, no. Uh, any questions about the salary study? Well, on the background discussion here, <clears throat> somebody wrote on here that um, Council Member Junkersfeld in meetings with the Employee Survey Committee with representatives from all city departments reinforced this sentiment on behalf of the City Council. Okay? Yeah. First of all, I don't know who wrote that. It says that it was prepared by Melanie, so I assume that she did it. Oh, I'm sorry. I assumed that she did it. But when I started reading my, my packet, I thought, so I want to ask Janice first, who gave the information to the background discussion that states that? Or, and you can tell me in a minute. Because first of all, the employee committee met from December the 12th to February 27th. And at the last meeting, we didn't accomplish anything much because Gabe showed up unannounced and everybody was wondering why he was there. It I was is, hang requested on, hang on a minute, to attend. Hang on, let me finish. You never yes, let me finish anything. Happy Just, to. Hang on. It's unethical for a city manager to show up at any committee meeting. If someone asked you or told you you should come to the meeting, you should have been ethical about it and told them it, you don't belong there. But Gabe was there and employee, the employee's demeanor changed immediately. It was not fair to the employees because we asked them to do an anonymous survey and they did and it was good and bad on both the city manager and the council. Then Todd decided to have a committee and it was good and the employees were able to talk honestly and earnestly and Mary and Paul can both attest to that about things that were happening. <clears throat> I did feel like everything was somewhat blamed on the employees and that Gabe was not part of that problem. Several employees that were present had issues and they were explained away like it never happened. And I felt sorry for them. And I'm not here to argue any of this point sure. with you, okay? But the committee and Lee could only make suggestions to Gabe about, about <clears throat> the employees. And then Paul, on the January 16th meeting, he gave an update. And then Lee gave one on April the 7th that was much nicer. Um, to my knowledge, the only thing that was ever mentioned about this salary survey was when the, sal the survey had been started to compare where our city was with other cities, okay? The presentation on the salary study was on March 19th, 
and on May 21st, the step plan and grade assignments were approved by the council. So the employee meeting committee had been over for four and a half weeks, okay? I wanna explain why that's not true. From the very first meeting of that employee committee meeting, I made sure and made this statement many times, and Paul and Mary can attest to this, I need everyone to understand here that Paul and Mary and I are only here to listen to the employees and try to explain or understand why they have concerns about. We cannot make any changes to the employees because the council only has one employee and that's Gabe. I also referred that our organization was like a football team and some people understood it a little bit better. The citizens and taxpayers are the owner of this city. They are the ones that pay and have voted the council in just like the people up in stairs in a football team, they're hired by the football owners. We're paid to look after everything in this city. The council, just like those people in that little box up there, they hire a city manager or a head coach to lead the employees or the team players to do the best they can for the city or their team. When the team players aren't playing well and there are things that discourage the owners due to leadership of the city manager or the head coach, the owner tells the ones upstairs to get it fixed. The head coach or the city manager is the one common denominator that goes between the employees and the ones upstairs, which is the council. So the problems between the employees and the council fall on the city manager's shoulders, unfortunately. I did make a statement that I felt the council as a whole wants to do what is best for our employees, but we have to be able to afford it. I never have nor have I ever, will I ever do or say anything on behalf of the council, unless the council as a whole asks me to. And I don't think I ever did that in that meeting. I know there are a few people in our organization that changes wording and statements like this one, and nobody says anything. Sometimes they hide things in summaries that they send out, but I can tell you right now, I don't appreciate anybody putting words in my mouth and publicizing it on a public computer and making it seem as if we talked about the salary study in the employee committee meetings. We did not, it's a flat out lie. And I think it might be a good idea, Gabe, <clears throat> if you and Melanie, just to make a chart of every position in the city, even the ones that are changed. Um, the one you sent on your emails kind of clumped together, okay? It doesn't make sense a lot. And put the pay that they're making now, right. and what this option to, if we budget it in, what they're gonna make when they're on their base, and how long they've been here. Not their names, don't wanna know that, just their positions and not all lumped together. Eight full-time employees make this much money, okay? <clears throat> um, because I feel like this, this option is a great for the upper management, but the ones down below y'all, I think is not, <laughs> they're not getting it very fair. And we need to remember that everybody across the board just got a 10% raise in October except for the part-time people, and Melanie talked to me about this, we, at, we did as, make a direct statement that they should start out at $15 an hour, and only a few of them received that. And one last thing that I wanna say, <laughs> several employees stated in the meeting that they continue to work for the city of Saginaw because they love the city. The pay isn't always been at the top, but they love the citizens and the city as a whole. Some employees that have went to other cities and worked or have retired have come back to the city because Saginaw is a great community to be part of. I love this city and I want all the employees to be happy and start working like they did as a team across the board and not be stressed out. So yes, our employees do deserve races very much so and they need to up their positions. But we need to hire more employees also so the ones that are here can have some relief and they're able to use some of their personal time and not be so stressed with all the overtime they put in. Every employee in this city is very much appreciated by me and a lot of other people for all you do. And I just think that we need to look at this more so that all the employees are treated fairly. And so I'm asking Janice, is, do you, is it Melanie that put it in there? Because I just wanted to know who put the words no, in my mouth. I'll, I'll accept responsibility for the agenda item Okay. Uh, I was not at that meeting. I was told by members of the committee that it was stated that your intentions were uh, as you have stated them, that you wanted to get employees raises and that you wanted to get help as in new positions. But it wasn't on behalf if, of the city council. I, yeah, I never stated that and I would like to clear that. That was only a statement that you made as part of the committee. Okay. I was asked to attend, asked to attend by the committee, the final meeting so that I could hear the feedback 
So well, in all uninvited. Honesty, nobody knew why you were there. Uh, Lee, I was asked to attend. Y yes, you were. Yes. So if that was lost in translation, I apologize. This is not about me to your uh, points about the salary study. What? Oh, okay. Uh, to your points about the salary study, we have tried to be objective and fair for every person at every level of the organization. This is based not on my opinion, but the market. So you are correct. Some employees are not receiving the same percentages or dollar amounts. It's because there are differences in um, their actual grade, which the city council, and to your point, council member, you brought this up when the city council unanimously adopted the new pay plan. How are we gonna pay for it? We said, we don't know, but we're confident based on the direction of the city council, we will bring back option two, which is what we have done. So well, you, I, I understand your explanation and everything. I understand the comprehension and everything, right. but I still feel like if I could see that by line item by every person in the city that works. Happy to get you that information. Okay. Council member Lawson requested as much by grade, you know, positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would grade. like to see because I just when I did the figuring and I looked it up I was shocked at some of the things I Absolutely. saw and I don't think it's fair to the taxpayers and I know it's not fair to a lot of the employees that I'm not saying that they deserve more than anybody else but I think that it could be cut a little bit different so that they did get to in I guess I don't know how to say it so with that just changing it <laughs> I would like to defer to the expert who is Jada Kent to address the differences by grade, if we could. I understand the differences by right. grade, Gabe. That's not what I'm talking about. I just think that we, I need to see it personally, line by line, so I know what's what. Sure, happy okay. to share that with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so that is something that the, the council ha has asked for, and I'm simply asked for it, and it's just raw data. Yeah. Uh, does it mean that we, uh, are, are trying to warm our way out. Of no, this. not at all. Uh, to me, I'm, I'm a data guy. I, I, mm -hmm. Everybody knows that I got a degree in statistics. And a couple of things I want to look at is one, to make sure the data is normalized. I, I, I talked to you earlier about that. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, I'll state this. There are certain things that, uh, from a statistical standpoint, that you can't do, uh, or you shouldn't do. Uh, one of them is, I can't compare one grade level to another grade level because you're then you're mm -hmm. comparing apples and oranges mm -hmm. but what i Correct. want to do is i'll, I'll pick grade, let, let's say grade one 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 i don't even know what that is what i do want to do is i want to compare all of my data points within that grade of one 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 and what i want to do is i want to look at what the midpoint is because mm -hmm. that's where we're shooting for it either public or a private company when you start doing your salary things, you're always shooting for the midpoint. Mm -hmm. Anybody below the midpoint, you're pushing to get them to a midpoint. And it's my understanding our goal is to, within average, to get somebody within that grade to that midpoint within about five years. That's correct. And okay. the midpoint is the average. The average, the midpoint right. is the average. Mm -hmm. Now, as you start crossing over the midpoint and going this way, that usually comes if, you know, you get bigger raises, if, you know, and time served your percentage will go down because you're getting to the top of that grade. Right. And so to me, one of the reasons I ask for that data, I will also say the data has to be scrubbed. Do not send me any data with anybody's name. Not. Mm -hmm. All I want to see is employee one mm -hmm. to employee 556. That, that's, for me to make that analysis, that's what it is. Once I get it done and you crunch the data, at that point it, it becomes pretty easy and you use a program called jump or mini tab it'll, it'll spit it right out for you um, so that that's why i just want everybody to know why i'm asking for the data and and i think that's why Val that is asking for that to do, do i'm not that. against it at all they yeah. all deserve more okay yeah. good yeah. have no problem yeah. with it and, and one other point uh council member you made a great point we presented a list of future positions right you'll recall maybe two mm -hmm. meetings ago we received clear direction from the city council uh that Option two, which is to correct employees for their correct uh, step based on tenure, as well as their position, was the priority. Now, what that means, just like all of our personal uh, budgets, we can't necessarily fund all the, all the things we want, right, or need. 
We've, we have that list of positions for the future when we have capacity to address. I don't think that anybody here, and I will open it up, this is a, a team effort, uh, which is something we've been consistent, has said we would like to add new positions at the expense of not fixing the 800 pound gorilla problem of compression, which is in every department in varying degrees. So to your point of we need more help, I completely agree. This was sentiment that was shared in the employee survey meeting. I, I completely agree. But we've received clear direction from the council that this is the priority. If you choose to change or some other, we're, we're here to serve you and do what the majority pleases. I just so think if, I need to, we need to look at it more closely. Okay? Sure. And get it, that information by Thursday so we have time to review it before yeah. Saturday. I mean, Absolutely. And, and I'll defer if, if I don't want to speak for the crowd. Uh, I happen uh, to be a man at the top. But if I'm speaking out of turn, please correct me, anyone, any department. No, what I, you said is accurate. Taking care of existing employees and fixing the salaries, getting us to market was the priority from the fire department and all the department heads can weigh in, but I believe that's general consensus. We're all on the same page. I, I'd also the way I look at it, and I've often said this, that we can do anything we want. We just can't do everything. Right. So there has to be a pecking order. The must-haves, the want-to-haves, the like-to-haves. Mm -hmm. And to me, resolving this problem is a must-have. Uh, we have so to. I, I agree with that. And to me, getting that data, we should be able to get that data tomorrow. The, uh, the company that does it, they've already got it. Yeah. I mean, they should be able to put that in an Excel spreadsheet. They probably already got it in an Excel spreadsheet. They should be able to send me that data. Heck, they should probably be able to send me that data in 15 minutes. It's, yeah. it's at their fingertips. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. I think the Excel spreadsheet, I was going to request that as well because we can't do anything with a flat PDF file. Oh, no, it has to be, I, I want to run it through like a mini tab or a jump, I don't know which program, but no, I have to have it in, it either has to be delimited or it has to be an Excel. Sure. No, that's good feedback. Happy to get it. Thank you. Yeah. Mary. Yes, um, I just wanted to make two general statements. One, the three of us that were on the survey committee I was not under the impression that we were there simply to listen because all three of us did give quite a bit of input while we were on that meeting, not just for financial salaries. We talked about 15 or 20 different topics, and so we were very engaged in the, we were not just there to listen. And if I can give an example of another type of company that how they used to give uh, salary increases when I was in, you know, in the workplace. Uh, I worked for 14 years for a company that was in the top 50 companies in the United States. And just to compare the way they gave raises, we should all be very pleased with this uh, this way of, 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 you know, honoring our staff because those raises were given based 100% on performance. That can be very subjective. So that caused a lot of problems. Um, also the uh, compression situation, there was a time that the company did was able to hire a, a group of new people, quite a few new people. And they uh, did advertise a salary range. Now, we as employees were not allowed to talk to anybody about what our personal salary was. And if in fact we did that, it was a very well-known policy, we would be fired on the spot. If we even discussed what salary we made, Councilmember, we live in a fishbowl. It's all public information. I know, and no that's one, what's so yeah. great about government is is all of this is transparent. That's right. And also the compression situation, when when the company was able to hire a, a number of new employees, 
they did advertise the salary range. Well, there were many people that had been working at this company for over 20 years. And the people coming in knew the bottom of that salary range was higher than what some of these people were making who were excellent employees over 20 years of service. So this process right here is the most so, uh, objective and fair process that I have ever seen. And I'm proud of Baker Tilly and the work they did. I'm proud of our council for approving their recommendation. And I know that the staff is happy with this process. Thank you. Yeah, the only final thing I have, I'd like to thank the council for the support last year and this year. Again, this is a difficult uh, problem that is uh, costly, but you have advised us to tackle this project uh, in this problem as a majority with option two, and we have the recommendation, the means to do it. The decision is yours, so thank you. Appreciate it. I, I would like to say one thing. So I, I can tell you staff has appreciated Baker Tilly because if you recall a couple years ago, the council said, well, what do you need? So we all kind of came with estimates based on what we thought, but it's uh, tremendously helpful um, to have professionals who do this for a living uh, and who are completely objective to make recommendations. Well, and you can go to Mayor Pro Tem, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. In uh, Council Member uh, Junkersfeld's statement, I want to make sure I heard it right, but there was a characterization, I think, that the compensation plan that's being put forward somehow favored employees at the higher end of the pay scales over the people at the lower end of the pay scales. Well, Did I hear that correctly? It just looks like it's a little bit top heavy to me. Just that's your you know. opinion? Is that what you're stating? Because I. I yeah. I take offense to that remark. There was a lot of effort put into that, and then it's not what's presented. So, well, it's all clumped in together, like all the full, eight full-time employees and everything. It needs to be broke out so we know what's going on. That's what I thought. Just Mayor Pro Tem, could <clears throat> could I just add something to the conversation here, just a little bit? I have studied this whole salary and compensation issue for a number of years prior to me getting to even to Saginaw. So. Um, I'm pretty familiar with it, and Ms. Kent has uh, expertly identified and defined compression, but I think it bears a f just a couple of minutes to discuss how compression affects everything else that we do in terms of hiring and retaining employees. And so to try to put it as succinctly as possible, when you ha don't have any room between the entry level of a pay grade and the top out level of a pay grade and not enough separation between positions that are superior and subordinate, as Ms. Kent dis discussed, it makes it almost an impossibility to hire from the outside and hire experienced people into our organization that can can benefit the organization and the operation of the organization and pay them what they are worth in the market without disadvantaging the people who have been loyal to the company here for a number of years. So I know for a fact that, that, it, that we have lost employees here in the past five years who have quit yesterday or let's say, for example, yesterday, gone to another uh, city tomorrow and made stepped in the door making more money doing the the exact same thing that they were doing here 
And we would love to be able to attract people into that. And I know this to be a fact. It's very starkly apparent in the public safety sector, but it really affects all the departments, but especially in the public safety sector for the last eight or nine years, cities have more and more raised public safety salaries. They have paid hiring and hiring incentives to attract people with, let's say, five to 10 years experience, very marketable, experienced police officers, let's say, to come into organizations and make as much money as somebody who had already been in the organization for 10 years plus. And we, our pay scale, as it currently stands, is, is a fair pay scale. However, it does not allow for the room the way we have implemented steps over the years, especially, it does not allow for the room to hire people in to attract tenured, experienced people. So what the police department gets, frankly, right now is a, is a bunch of brand new people who we generally are now having to sponsor through academies who probably have little or very no experience at all. And if we could stretch out those pay scales at, at all the different levels in all the different departments and make room for people to be hired in with experience and paid for what they are worth in the market, it would help improve the organization over time. And also, we've just seen recently a couple of examples of people who have been reluctant to take uh, appointments to be promoted because there was not really a pay incentive in it for them and it meant that if they got promoted they might make a few cents literally more than what they were making and have to go back to an undesirable schedule on top of that and so we we need to one of the things that this option number two does is to correct or start to correct both of those issues so that we have more incentive internally for people to stay here and promote up through the ranks and are, we're also able to attract tenured experience from outside when we need to to better the organization. That's correct. Yeah. So the so that that's done. That's right. Water under. We we have made some people say an uncomfortable decision. I didn't think it was that hard. It was the right thing to do. It was unanimous. Yeah. Right. Unanimous. So that's done. So now now the only thing is is adjusting everybody within that new pay scale, taking into consideration that midpoint across the whole thing, and make sure. Within fairly evenly distributed according to that. District. That's correct. correct. Yeah, and according to the recommendation from Baker Tilly. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, yeah. And, and, and like I say, I just mentioned they just go back and look at it, but uh, like I say, when, when, when they did it, they gave three options. Option B was the best viable option to get us moving in that direction. That's correct. And I'm not saying I'm not for it. Yeah, and, and I, I don't. Just wanna know, I just want to know. I just want to see. We'll, we'll uh, uh, Councilmember Lawson said we'll have it tomorrow. So Baker Tilly's listening. I think we'll have it tomorrow. And I, I don't want there to be any uh, personal ill will between you and I or whatever happened. If I have mischaracterized uh, what was stated in these meetings, you have said uh, you support our employees. I do. I appreciate that. Wow. All of us here appreciate that. Uh, this exercise is not talk, nobody not one council person here can talk on behalf of the city council right it's those four words that y'all put in there sure that was not okay with me sir and I will accept okay I will accept full responsibility and again I thank you for your previous support uh, both for me personally and on behalf of all of our employees right. I, I tell I this to you a lot I do not envy y'all's position uh, because you have citizens come up to you and you all are busy and have full-time jobs and families and everything. I, I don't. Well, my thing is, you, you, anytime you deal with the complete of anything, you know, you're going to get this much and this much. But I, I, I'm a firm.
firm believer that if you have good data and you can talk to the information, right. uh, you're going to have some people that absolutely agree with it, some people that don't like it but understand it. And sure. then you always got that, you know, 10, 20, 10 percentage. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe end on a high note unless anybody else has any feedback. But the good news is next year we don't have this hill to climb should the city council choose to take the recommendation. Uh, next year it will be more of maintenance of the plan that the city council adopted, which is um, cost of living in steps so that, as Lee mentioned, people can move through their, their ranges as experience and time in the position. So. The, the pain is here and now, uh, but next year and future years. Um, and one last thing, the city council adopted a compensation philosophy. Again, I greatly appreciate that. That said, basically, we're gonna keep up with cost of living. If we have health insurance costs, we will not uh, pass that down to the detriment of the employee. There has to be an offset in salary to cover. Uh, and that every five years, we would do an update of the salary study, which I don't think Five years from now, I tend to be here, council willing, uh, we will have the same problems. Yeah, that was saying, as far as I was going to say, we, we, I I we passed a, and it's that saying that we were going to stick with it. Correct. Yep. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. Council, any other questions? Okay, at 7.08, I take us into executive session. So we need to announce, apologize, we need to announce the section numbers. So okay. 551071 and okay. uh, 551087. Yep. 551071 and 551.087. <coughs> okay. Sorry, first time. <laughs>
charge it. We're not going to have the lottery. Right. Um, well, I got to take us back into regular session. At 7.48, I take us back into regular session. Take a motion to adjourn. Motion by Cindy. Second by Nick. There it is. We are. Can you send me we are officially adjourned at 748.